Father, thank you for this afternoon. We do ask that that would help us as we talk about this book of Ruth, help it be an encouragement to us, and that we would allow us to meditate on not only this scripture, but other scriptures as well. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, uh, Carolyn, what are, got an easy question, not a problem. E easy question for you. How many, um, how many chapters of... Are there in the book of Ruth? Four. Uh, four chapters, that's right. There are four chapters in the book of Ruth. Now, um, and the book of Ruth has, has 80, 80, the book of Ruth has 85 verses in it. So we add all the verses up in those four chapters, we have uh, 85 verses. Now, if we remember in the, from the book of Ruth, as far as um, during this time period of the events in the book of Ruth, who was the ruling, who was ruling, who was in charge of the nation of Israel? Do you remember, Tammy? The judges. The judges. The judges. The judges were um, were in charge of the nation of, of Israel, and we have an idea that um, uh, that <clears throat> we're talking. We were discussing about Moab. This is the place where uh, Naomi, her husband Elimelech, her two sons, went to live, and they went there because there was an absence. A bread in the land. There was a famine in the land of Bethlehem. And Bethlehem, we know, means house of bread. And they, they left Bethlehem. Now Bethlehem, interesting enough, is it's a it's a very it's a historical place, not only in modern history, but in biblical history, which is far more important than, than modern history. Um, there, there's a significance to Bethlehem. Um, if you remember, I mean there's all different events, different people. That passed through Bethlehem, that came to Bethlehem, that dwelt in Bethlehem, that were born in Bethlehem, all these different types of events that took place from Bethlehem, the house of bread. And it's interesting that, um, um, you know, when we're talking about physical bread, we also have spiritual bread. And Bethlehem is the place, the source of when we had, when the incarnation occurred, the bread of life, the Son of God, He became flesh, He became incarnate. He was born uh, at conception, he, was, he became flesh, he, became, he was born in the city, or the, the city of Bethlehem, in the house of bread. So Elimelech, his wife, what was his wife's name again, Caroline? Remember the wife of Elimelech? Uh, I was going to say, why do I keep saying Ruth or, I don't know, it's <laughs> confusing. It begins with, it, 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 because we have, we, have, we have a bunch of women's names. In, in Naomi? Naomi, Ruth? that's right. Oh. That's right. Naomi is right. <laughs> Naomi is right. It, it, is, it is very confusing because <laughs> yeah. we, have, we, we have all these women. There's a, there's I'm a trying. Lot of <laughs> a lot of women's names that are mentioned in the book of Ruth, you know. We then we have they move the sons of Naomi the sons of Elimelech they have they have uh, they marry two women who are from the land of Moab don't they mm -hmm. uh, and what was um, one of the ladies' names Orpa Orpa now the other one Carolyn what was the other one's name remember the um, this this is you know the answer you know the answer to this question uh, I didn't ask it right. I didn't ask the question. Right. Okay. Now, and um, we, the, the, the sons, uh, Elimelech and Naomi, had two sons. Okay. Um, and their two sons, Mahon and Chilion, they, after their father died, they married women from the land of Moab. Uh, Chilion married Orpah. And Malhan married Moba? No. Uh, Mal Malhan uh, Mal Malan. Malan, thank you. Malan, thank you, Tammy. Malan oh. married uh, this is a um, this is not meant to be a trick question. Malan married let's see if we can find the verse. Uh, it's um, when Naomi took them wives, it verse says four. Is it verse four? Look at verse four for a um, a clue. Verse four. Uh, Mo. Uh, oh, 
chapter 1, verse 4 of chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse yes, 4, uh, okay. Uh, Mo, um, and they took them wives of the women of Mo, Moba, the name of one was Opah, and Ruth? Yes, that's right, Ruth. That's Ruth. <laughs> sure. Ruth. <laughs> Ruth was the name of the other. You remember that? Yeah, I'm other. trying, I'm right? trying, yeah, I'm trying. Now, um, my other question is, now Moab, in relationship to the Dead Sea, now, if we, uh, I guess I could put, put, put a picture up here on the, on the thing, but, but if we think of the Dead Sea, we have on the, on the what side is this? On the, on the west side, we have the, the Sea of Galilee. Not the Sea of Galilee, we have the uh, Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. Sometimes in the Bible it's labeled the Great Sea. Uh, but the Mediterranean Sea, we have this over there on, on, the, on the west side. And then we have the Sea of Galilee up in the north. And then in the south, we have in the southern part of Jerusalem. Oh, thank you. Why don't I put on this thing here? Okay. Yeah, well, then anyone who might be yes, watching, I can see it. Okay, I'm going to put this we'll on the screen here. So you can see it. You may have to turn the machine on. I'll have to flip to the. Um, let me see here. Is it on yet? Where's this one? Is this? Okay, we're making some progress here. Mm -hmm. oh, it's going to whatever we are now. Okay, now I'm going to put this on here. Now, we auto focus here. Now we have. It's in focus. It's in focus, not good. So, see up here, this is this over here is the, the Mediterranean Sea. Mm -hmm. All right, the Mediterranean Sea. And this is this is this is this space this this region here is where is modern day Israel is already in ancient Israel. Okay. Up here, all the way up here, all the way down here. But we have here the Mediterranean Sea is is in the west. Now, up here is the Sea of Galilee. Um, sea of Galilee. And between the Sea of Galilee and this this body water here is the Dead Sea. Between the Sea of Galilee and the Dead Sea is the Jordan River. Now, we have Moab, which is, uh, Moab is, pardon me, uh, Bethlehem, is south of Jerusalem. There's Jerusalem here, where my, my pencil is. I'm not sure if they could see that. And then we have Bethlehem being here. Here's the Dead Sea, and then Moab is over here. Now, what direct, of course, we see Moab here is, it's, it's east of the Dead Sea. So the so Ruth, pardon me, not Ruth, Naomi, uh, Elimelech, Seymour. Seymour, yeah. 830. We'll be going south, thank right? Bye-bye. Yes, thank you. Bye. Bye. Good to meet yes. you. Uh, so we have Ruth, not Ruth, we have Naomi, Elimelech, and the two sons. Malan and Chilean. Malan and Chilean. They came from Bethlehem, and I would suspect they came and they, they crossed up here, they could have come down this way, but I, my, 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 I'm not sure why, but I, I would suspect uh, they came over uh, with uh, Bethbara, and they came down to Moab. They could have come the other direction, I'm sure. It just seems closer, doesn't it? Yeah, it just seems closer. Yeah. And so they came, this, this is where they came, they came to Moab. And so Moab, as we saw here on the map, was um, uh, to the east uh, of, of the Dead Sea. And as we mentioned last week, the Dead Sea uh, is about 500 feet below sea level. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think where we live here in New Jersey, in this part of New Jersey, we're maybe 25, 35 feet above sea level. Something like that. I, I don't know. 25, you said? 25 feet. Oh, okay. Maybe it could be as much as 50, but uh, it's not very much. But we're still above sea level. Is that why it's so salty? Here? No, the Dead Sea. Yes, that's, that's one reason. That's one reason why it's so salty because, well, because because it it's so low, you know it's the it's the lowest. Well, I think it's, uh, it's well as far as a body of water, it's it's it starts out 500 feet below sea level, mm -hmm. which is quite a bit, and uh, it has five. I think the concentration of salt and it's five times greater than that of the Atlantic Ocean, or you name name your other Pacific Ocean, name your name your oh, ocean. Yeah. <laughs> You know, we don't want to go through naming all the oceans, but the, the most are you know, the, the, the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. These these are these are salt salty bodies of water, but they're not. They're, they're they have one fifth 
less. The, 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 the Dead Sea is five times greater, the salt content. Now, it's, it's, uh, there is, there is, uh, it's, it's believed by many, or by some, I should say, or many biblical archaeologists, that the Dead Sea, underneath the Dead Sea, there's a tell. Now, a tell is just a fancy word for saying just the ruins of some old city. There, there's a, what did you call it? A tell. T-E-L, tell. I think oh, it's that's how you spell it, tell. Oh, okay. Of course, I may be spelling it wrong, but I think it's tell is spelled T-E-L, tell. And a tell is a, is a, is a spot where but beneath, beneath the ocean floor, beneath the floor of the Dead Sea, many archaeologists believe, biblical archaeologists believe, or have postulated that we have the, the tell, the remnant, or the remains, if there are any remains at all, of the, city of so the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, below that region. We, remember, we know uh, that God rained out fire and brimstone. Um, brimstone, I guess, and some believe that's some type of sulfur. Uh, and I, I remember in, in science class a long, getting longer ago, uh, sulfur, <laughs> it has, it has uh, an interesting, it has a very distinct and unpleasant smell to it. And I'm not sure what, what how sulfur, if anything, in fire and brimstone, how, how, how that relates to the sodium, you know, N N N NHCl or salt. Uh, I'm not sure if there's, there's probably different uh, chemicals of, of, of salt, but it's salt. I'm not sure if the sea salt, I think sea, sea salt is different than your table salt, but, but still, the Dead Sea is salt, and, and I'm saying all this to say that it's possible that not only the fact that it's the lowest spot on earth, the lowest body of water on earth, but also because of the fact that God's judgment upon the nation of Sodom and Gomorrah could contribute to that. Uh, it doesn't, not necessarily, but I think it could contribute to that fact uh, of, of the salt content. Uh, because if you remember, remember um, that when uh, Abraham and Lot were deciding, we, we, I guess we could go back to the passage, but I'll just, we'll just talk about it verbally. When they were deciding where to, where to, where to, where to stay, they were, they were too big. They were, they were too big to stay together, and so they had to separate. Lot and Abraham said, Lot, you decide which way you want to go. You go this way, I'll go the other way. And... Um, you know, Lot saw the, you know, the, the plane, he, he, saw, he saw something that was beautiful in, in, in the region where he was going, you know, the land of Sodom. Um, not, not that the place where Abraham went was not beautiful, but it, there's, there's, there's an indication of that the topography of the area changed after, after the fact, I mean, after the fact of, of the judgment of God upon the nation of Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, that, that's so... That's, uh, so we have brought up this, this point about the Dead Sea, the fact that it's located near Moab. Moab is on the, uh, <clears throat> Moab is east of the Dead Sea. Um, Bethlehem, Judah is west of the Dead Sea. And Moab is a country, Bethlehem, Judah is a, is a city uh, in, in, the nation, in the nation of Israel. And so they, uh, they decided to go there because of the famine uh, that was um, that was in that was in the land. Now, remind me, uh, just for a review, who lost, uh, whose husband died. This this is kind of a. There uh, were three people. Three people. Who's? Naomi uh, was one, right? Yes, Naomi was one. That's right. Naomi was one. Orpa was one. Orpa was one. That's right. And who was the who was the uh, other one? Remember, Caroline. This this is one of those. You know, it's not a trick question, but who is the other one? Uh, it's the same answer you had before. Ruth? Oh, Ruth, that's right. It's Ruth. So, <laughs> I'm going to go the class yet. <laughs> Ruth. And so um, we have uh, the, 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 the sadness that's, that's taking place. And if we remember, um, they, they learn, you now they, they have, again, a question, kind of review questions. How many, how many years? Were um, were they there? About about how many years were were, were they in Moab? Well, of course, Ruth and Orpah were there their life. Uh, how much uh, we they, they could have, they could be as young. Uh, I just speculate they could be as young. You know, they could have been in their teens when they married the two uh, the two sons, uh, someplace in the teen range. 
they could they perhaps have been older, but my, my, my guess would be they would have been in their some in their teen years when they were married. And so that means they would probably be in their in their twenties now. So they, they lived in the in the land, you know, a good twenty over twenty years, close to thirty years probably, uh, Ruth and Orpa. But as far as as far as Naomi, how long did Naomi live uh, in the land? Ten years. Ten years, that's right, ten years. And um, and they were going to go back. They learned. What did they learn? What did Naomi learn when she was in the land of Moab? This is kind of kind of after kind of after ten years, she learned something. What I mean, what does the Bible? She probably learned a lot of things. The Bible doesn't tell us what she learned, but what's one thing that she learned about? Something back home? that was going on at Bethlehem. Bethlehem. I mean, what was going on at Bethlehem? What What did she learn? There was bread. There was bread again in the house of bread. And so uh, she was going to return to Bethlehem. And remember last week we talked about, we discussed the fact of, um, of how they were actually on the road to Bethlehem. They were going back to Bethlehem, whether it's, whether it's this, um, this journey here, to whether, it's the, whether it's the way that's uh, the southern route or the northern route. Uh, they, were, they, were going, they were going back, back. From Moab, they were, going, they were returning back to Bethlehem. And as they were on the road, uh, as they were on the road going back to Bethlehem, and we don't, we, perhaps we don't really understand the, um, the topography of, of the area, because we, we, don't, we, not, we don't live there. We understand the topography of, of New Jersey for the most part in different places we've been, in the United States, going from point A to point B, and our automobiles are on our feet. Um, but but the but the area is very um, some areas of, of, the, of that area of the country of the world are very rugged, very um, mountainous. mountainous, and and of course maybe mountains you have valleys, and so terrain can be very challenging, very very uh, rugged, you know, very very hard to, to negotiate, not impossible but uh, difficult and challenging. Uh, perhaps it would be more challenging for us than it would be for them. Because they were, they were, that's all they knew. They didn't have any automobiles, any, any, any four-wheel drives. They had no other means of transportation other than their feet and maybe wagons and, and, and some type of uh, beast of burden they would, they would have that would help them in their, in their journey. But they were going back. And as they were going back, uh, to, uh, they mean, when I say as they were, I mean, I thought about the three ladies. Three ladies were, uh, what were the three ladies' names? One of them was named uh, Naomi. Hey, what's another one of the ladies' name, like names? Ruth. Ruth, that's right. That's good, Caroline. Ruth, that's right. <laughs> Orpa. Yeah. Orpa. Orpa was the other one. And um, in verse, uh, there's a, as a brief uh, review here, verse 18, we, we have uh, uh, we see here when she saw uh, that she was steadfastly minded to go with her. Then she left speaking unto her. Now, this is she's talking to uh, Naomi's talking to Ruth in this passage, um, and so we have. Um, I'm going back, and so in verse 19, verse 19. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass. When they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them, and said, "Is this Naomi?" And go ahead and I'll read verse uh, twenty, Caroline, of chapter one, verse twenty, chapter one. And she said unto them, "Call me not Naomi. Call me." <clears throat> I can't pronounce that. Mara. Mara, for the Almighty had dealt very bitterly with me. Go ahead and read verse um, 21, please, Tammy. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Why then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me? So Naomi returned, and Ruth, the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, with her, which returned out of the country of Moab, and they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. And so when it says the two of them, in verse, uh, verse 19, 
Uh, this is Naomi, and who else? Who is the other one? Ruth. Ruth, that's right. That's right. So the two of them came to Bethlehem. And again, what does the word Bethlehem mean? House of bread. It means house, house of bread. That's correct. It means house of bread. And what, how was, what was the response? What was the response that they had? Well, well, who was moved? Okay, who was moved about them? The people of Bethlehem. The people of Bethlehem, and did the people of Bethlehem they ask a particular question um, in verse nineteen? Caroline, okay. they asked a question. What was the question they were wondering? They asked a question, specific question. Um, I think they did, didn't they? They were moved about them, and they said, "Is this Naomi?" Okay, so they they were wondering. You know, it's been a while. Ten years. I guess. Ten years. And they were just, just wanted to, to, is this Naomi? They knew, they knew Naomi, but they knew Naomi went away. And now Naomi's coming back. Now she's coming back with, differently than she arrived, than she left, didn't she? Yeah, she's now, coming how, back bitter. She's coming back bitter, that's right. She's coming back bitter. That's why, mm -hmm. if we think of it, she said Mara. Mara means, means bitter. Yeah. Naomi means, what does Naomi mean again? Pleasant. It means pleasant. And so they, they were, they were, they, they went. They, just, they were wondering, is this Naomi? They were asking the question. And then, how, how was it that Naomi responded to, her quest, to their question in verse 19? How did how they respond? I think we already maybe touched on it. But how did how they, how'd she, re, how'd she respond? She, she, she was asked, moved? Oh, go ahead. Wait, Clark, Caroline. No, I said she was moved, or... Okay, yes, that's what I want to add to that, Tammy. Um, she told them not to call her Naomi. Yes, that's right. That's right. She didn't want to be called Naomi. She wanted to be called Mara. Because she was... She had, she had bitterness, and she was... She was, in a certain sense... Um, a, this, this passage, um, perhaps... Gives us a indication that she was bitter with God, because she was blaming God for the things that things that happened in her life that she didn't like. Namely, in particular, the fact that her husband died, Elimelech, and her two sons had died, uh, and so she was bitter, and she she wasn't uh, afraid or hesitant to say that she was bitter. So. Sometimes there could be bitterness that people will have inside of them that they will conceal. But here, the bitterness of Naomi was not concealed. She was, she was, she was just angry and she was upset. And her, her anger and her, and her upsetness and her bitterness was, was directed towards, towards God. Not, not towards the people that were there, but she was just, she was just, just bitter. She was bitter. Um, and she said, uh, what did she say in verse 20? She said, about, um, is it verse to call 20? her not Naomi, but to call, the, I can't, uh, Mara, uh, Mara, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. And so, you know, she was, she had this, she had this level of, of bitterness in, in, within her heart, and she, she wanted, and she, sell, she said this in verse 20, she says, For the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. Now, in verse 21, it's interesting that she says, I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. Now, later on, you know, I, I'm not sure what Ruth was thinking about this. I mean, what Naomi was meaning was that her, her husband and her sons had died. She wasn't necessarily trying to indicate that Ruth was, had no significance whatsoever. Because Ruth did have significance. Because later on in the book... Um, well, she didn't, leave, she didn't come back with anything, anyone that she left with. No, that's true. That's right. So from that vantage point... Right. From that vantage point, that's what she's, that's what she's saying. You're right. Mm -hmm. Because later on, we, we read, later on in, in chapter 4, we'll learn, which we're not there yet, 
or that, that uh, Naomi would say that Ruth is better than seven sons. You know, better than seven sons. So she really thought highly uh, of Ruth. And uh, Ruth, according to the testimony of uh, Boaz, which, again, we're, we're getting a little bit ahead of the text here, but, but the, this, this speaks to the character of uh, Ruth. We, we have um, Boaz and the people there in the nation know that Ruth is an honorable woman, and Ruth is, 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 was, is was kind to the um, Elimelech and, and her husband and her brother-in-law, and also to Naomi. There's, there's the, the, the passage there later on in chapter 4. We'll talk about that, how, I think it's chapter 4, perhaps chapter 3, about the kindness of Ruth. But this passage is about being empty. Now, uh, when there, there, there's, a, there's a kind of a parallel, a parallel thought here with this empty. See, Ruth says, not Ruth, Naomi says she came, she left full, she came back empty. Now later on in, in, in this book, we have here Ruth talking to Boaz, having a conversation with Boaz, and Boaz is going to give to her um, some grain, some barley. Um, I think it's like several ephahs of barley. Um, and it says, um, let me see, it's in chapter 3, that I can find it here. Uh, perhaps I, can, I can't find it right now. I had it earlier, but I don't have it right now. But there, but there, is, there, is, a, there, is, a, there is a passage here later on that talks about um, Ruth not leaving Boaz empty. So Boaz, uh, Boaz is a husbandman. He takes care of grains and, and different types of grains and different types of crops. Uh, that, that are that are grainy types of crops. Do you find it, Tim? Verse 15. Verse 15. What's weird for me? And he also, he said, Bring the veil that thou hast upon thee, and hold it. And when she held it, he measured six measures of barley, and laid it on her, and she went into the city. Okay, thank you. Is that the one? That's, it's, it's, um... It's around that passage, yes. Well, and then it says later in verse 17, and she said, these six measures of barley there gave he that's me. It. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that's it. That's it. That's it. Reach verse 17. That's the verse. For he said to me, go not empty unto thy mother-in-law. Okay, so that's that's what I'm looking at, the, the, the phraseology of, of, of 317, and then going back to one, um, this passage in chapter 1. Um, where, where Ruth, number where Naomi says she, she came back empty. So now Boaz, Boaz, Boaz incidentally is a, is a near kin, there, uh, of he's, he's family, he's close, close relative of Elimelech, um, and kind of by marriage by Naomi, and, and consequently by marriage by Ruth. And so, but he's not, he's not, the closest relative. And we're again we're getting ahead of head of the head of the the passage here, the text. But the the the, the overall objective of the book of Ruth is that here's a woman who needs to be redeemed. Uh, we, because we have we have there, there's there's an Old Testament principle that you want to honor if somebody died childless, if a man has died childless, then a brother, a the close a close kin, the closest relative to the man that died, the closest relative to the the sister-in-law would have had the obligation, the responsibility, in honor of the brother, in honor of the one that had died, to marry that sister-in-law, marry that close kin, the close kin's widow, and the first child that would be born to them would be have the inheritance, would have the name of the brother, so the brother's name or the close relative's name would not be lost. In the land, and that's 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 the, the the overall theme of the book of Ruth about redemption. Redemption. Now, redemption has a greater concept. Redemption has the, the idea of buying back. We we know that buying back, and um, in this particular instance, we had Elimelech and his his son Malcolm um, had had land. And but the land was associated with was connected with Ruth as well, but again, so we we'll get to this in the next the next chapter. 
But the idea of, of redemption, and we have Naomi saying, I'm bitter. Um, call me not Naomi, call me, don't call me pleasant, but call me bitter. I can't, I left full, I came back empty. Um, but yet, in some senses, you know, she has, she's not really empty. She's not really empty. But she, but she feels that way. That's how she is, and that's why she's bitter, and she's not afraid to say she's bitter. And she sees, it's very clear that she says she's bitter against um, the Most High God, because God dealt very bitterly with me. She's blaming God for the circumstances um, in her life. Now, Again, just to first quickly review, what relationship was Ruth to Naomi? What was the relationship? You know, remember Caroline? Do what? Uh, I was Sounds say. right. Yeah. Daughter. Daughter in law, right? Daughter. Daughter in law, yeah. right? That's what you were going to say, right? Yes. Da daughter in law. <laughs> it was the, she was the daughter in law. She married the you're son. You're bringing it out to me. You're, you're making me talk. <laughs> I usually don't say yeah. nothing. That's okay. It's all right. Um, and, oh, gosh. You know, what, now, let me ask this question. Now, um, and Ruth was, was a Moabite. She was from the land of Moab, which is, as you remember, it was, it was, it was um, Moab is, um, we have the Dead Sea. It's east of uh, the Dead Sea. It's east of the Dead Sea, the land of Moab. And what, when they came back to Bethlehem, what time of year was it? Maybe that's not quite... The right way of asking, what time, what time of year was it? I was going to say summer, but it could be winter. Well, I'm asking... Verse 22. Verse, right? verse 22. <laughs> verse, verse 22. Now, I, I, was, I, was, um, I, was, I was doing it some could, research. It could be some summer. We yeah. Don't... yeah, I was doing some research, it's... Caroline, to see. You see, in the United States, we do have, there is what we call winter wheat. And that's harvested in July, usually. Mm -hmm. In, in, in the in parts of the United States, they have harvesting in, in the summertime. Well, I was trying to do some research to see, you know, when, when what, what, what their practice was in Israel. Mm -hmm. But I, I, haven't got, I haven't got that part yet. <laughs> but, but what were they, I guess I should ask the question, that's a more exacting question. What were they harvesting this time of year? Barley. They were harvesting barley, that's right. They were harvesting barley. Um, it was barley harvest. So they came back during barley harvest. And this is significant because um, Boaz, he, this is his business. He's involved in harvesting different types of grains, and barley being one of them. And um, at the time, uh, we suspect they, they don't have the same type of equipment that we have um, today to harvest. On that pie, I, I, I don't think they have as much. They, their yield was perhaps... Not as great. That's we can't. We don't know if that's true or not. Um, well, it would be hard for it to be as great as today because right. they, they, they don't have, have the, stoves and stuff like we have. <laughs> and they don't have all the the equipment to get the, right. the yield that we yes. have. I guess what I what I meant by uh, maybe maybe I'm defining yield wrong. What what I meant by um, uh, by yield is so many. If you plant one bushel and you get. Ten bushels back, fifty bushels back, you know, on, on, on okay, an acre I land. I see what you're saying. But but, they're, but you're, what you're saying is the quantity. Clearly, they couldn't. You know, today ten, tens of thousands of acres farmers have right. that, they, that they that they that they that they work on. I understand you know? what you're saying. Though. But uh, but I'm. Well, I guess my question, my original comment, which was not precise enough, because I'm talking to. A, no, a farmer, no, no, no. You know? I'm not being precise at all no. about it. I'm not sure if I'm. <laughs> <laughs> but but so. But then that that put aside, they still worked in the fields. It was the, a lot. Of, most most of it, all of it was done by hand, harvesting by by hand, which is um, a very hard. It's a, you know, it's a, I'm sure it's hard. It's hard enough to do with machines. Yeah. But when you have, have to do it by hand, that's even more difficult. And so, it's the time of, of barley barley harvest. And now, in verse in verse um, one of chapter two. We have um, someone new being introduced into the book. What was the name of um, Naomi's husband again? 
Elimelech. 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 And he was, um, and let me ask you this question. Who was a mighty man of wealth? Let's, let's read these verses here. Verses, uh, Tammy, start with verse 1, and Caroline, verse 2, and I'll read verse 3. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. And Ruth the... the Moabites. Mo <laughs> said, uh, said unto Naomi, uh, Let me now go to the field and gleam ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her half was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz, who was the kindred of Elimelech. All right, so now uh, we have some things here interesting. We know that um, we're talking about this. Who was this mighty man of wealth? Naomi's kinsman. Kinsman. And what was his name? Emelak. That's the Lemelak is the, um, oh. he's the husband. Boaz. Bo Boaz. Boaz. Uh, Boaz, that's right. Boaz. I'll try. That's, that's who, that's who, uh, who it is here. Boaz. He is the, he is the mighty man of wealth. Now, um, his name means, uh, fleetness. Fleetness? Fleetness. Fleetness. Is that um, quick? Yes, I, I suppose so. Fleets, like like a fleet of ships, but nest, fleetness, um, which I'm not sure. Uh, that, that kind of brings up a little bit of confusion of what, what that really means. Uh, I think I, I knew at one time what they were trying to get at, the fleetness. Um, uh, perhaps like a you know, mighty man of wealth, when you think of a fleet, uh, you have it's a fleet. Strong. A strong, a strong, it's a fleet of ships. A lot of them, a lot of them. And so this is what his, his name means. Um, and now, let me ask you a question. Now, we may have to go someplace else to get the answer. Uh, or perhaps we, we, may, we may be able to get inside the book. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but I know we can get outside the book. But we, what is the name of um, Boaz's father? Boaz's father. Let's, um, it's Rahab's husband. Okay, right? Rahab's husband. Know what's the name of Rahab's husband? What's her husband's name? I don't remember. Okay. Okay. So now let's uh, let's look to um. Well, we may be able to sneak back to chapter four to see if it's there. If it's not there, we may have to go to First Chronicles to look. Um, we see it back there in chapter four near the end of chapter four, mm, verse yeah, eight. Salmon. Salmon. Okay. Now. <clears throat> Now we know that then also it's been, so that's verse 21, isn't that? Yes. Um, also we have, um, if we want to know other places he's mentioned. Caroline? He's, he's mentioning. Chapter 4, verse 21. Uh -huh. All right. Chapter 4. Oh, okay. Salmon? Yeah. He's also mentioned in um, First Chronicles. We go back to First Chronicles. We know his name in uh, Salmon. But let's see. Salmon is mentioned in First Chronicles. Salmon is mentioned in Ruth. Salmon is, sorry, Salmon is mentioned in Matthew. Salmon is mentioned in Luke. Um, so let's First Chronicles two eleven. Tammy, you want to read First Chronicles two eleven? Please. When I get there. And Nashon begot Selma, and Selma begot Boaz. All right, and uh, Caroline, would you please read Matthew one sixteen? Matthew one sixteen. Jumped over too far. Matthew one. 16? Yes, Matthew one verse sixteen. Okay. And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom was born Jesus, who is called Christ. Is that verse 16? Mm-hmm. Okay. I have... I wrote the wrong verse down. Let me see. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, obviously, let me see Matthew. Let me see if we can find the right verse. Matthew. 
Yeah. I'm not sure why. One five. One five? Okay, what are we, one five? And Salmon begat Bozat of Re Rehab, and Bozak begat Obey of Ruth, and Obey begat Jess. Okay, good. Thank you. And now let's turn to Luke. We got a Luke chapter uh, 3. Maybe we're talking verse 32. I think it will. Luke chapter what? Luke chapter 3. And verse, um, verse 32. Uh, which uh, was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Solomon, which was the son of Nason. And so the answer to our question, which we, we got from Ruth 4.21, was uh, Solomon. Solomon is the, uh, is the father of, uh, of Boaz. Now, what country, in verse 2 again, what country was, uh, was Ruth from? What was the name of her country? Moab. Her name of the country is Moab. Um, and Moab uh, said, uh, Let me now go to the field and glean ears of corn after him in whose sight I shall find grace. And Naomi's response was essentially, go ahead and go ahead, go. Go to the field and do that. Now when we say, when we talk about corn, um, corn is a kind of a, a generic word. Sometimes it can be a generic word for grain. Uh, so, so it's probably barley then? I think barley grain. I think I think maybe this was a barley harvest. It is barley harvest. That's correct. It is it is barley harvest, and so that would be the grain that's being just talked about. Uh, and when we talk about gleaning, um, mm -hmm. gleaning. What what is gleaning? Um, you know, Tammy. Yeah, I I was just thinking about that verse because okay. um, I wish I had my Bible. <laughs> I think I may have put a note there because it was there was something that I was reading. Maybe it was in um, Leviticus about gleaning and how they were supposed to um, save a portion of yes. what was in the field mm -hmm. uh, for the poor that didn't have anything, mm -hmm. and then they could come and glean and right. uh, have something to eat. And in the especially in the time of uh, the seventh year, when it's supposed to rest, I think. Seventh year or the sixth year, I think for something, some reason we, they were allowed to rest every. But, but they were always supposed to leave. They were always supposed to leave. Yeah, they were supposed to leave it, and so um, that way there'd be something for the poor to have. Early on in the book of Leviticus. Um, so the 20, around 23, 24. No, no, probably near the end of Leviticus. Oh, here, here it is. And when you reap the harvest of your land, thou shalt not make clean riddance of the corners of thy field. When thou reapest, neither shall thou gather any gleaning of the harvest. Thou shalt leave them unto the poor and to the stranger. I am the Lord your God. It's 23, 22, 23, right? 23, 23 22. 22. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 23, 22 of Leviticus. Um, and so that was, that was the, the, the policy. That's what they were supposed to do. And uh, the idea of gleaning has, uh, I believe, has to do with gathering. Gleaned as the gather, the gather, uh, we, we the harvest. I mean, now, uh, what with the way they, they glean, they can glean and they winnow, and they do all sorts of things that they, all, with these machines, all very, very close, almost in a, in a, in a systematic, simultaneous method. Uh, but here, um, there's a process to it. Uh, they, they glean and then they stack the stuff and then they, and they will winnow it and then they'll. Do different procedures. These procedures well, it today. Would be like picking it, I suppose. Yes, exactly. Picking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Picking. That's when we went, when I was in high school and junior high, we would go uh, do tasseling and then, um, you know, a lot of, we, we would pull out the tassels. And of course, you get, a lot of times you could see where they would cut, you know, the, the tassel, but there would still be some there that you would have to pull out by hand because mm -hmm. they didn't get it all. I mean, obviously that's not something that you eat, but it's still the same principle as far as right. you have to actually pick it with your hand. Even when, <clears throat> when you have a machine, you still have to go through it with your hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that particular procedure for, was for seed corn, was it not? Uh, I 
think so, okay. yes. Proceed, Court. It would detassel. Um, at a, well, I can't remember the name of the company, but anyway, I knew at one time. Pioneer. Pioneer, okay. Uh, Northrop King. Northrop King, okay. So I, I'm familiar with Pioneer, but Northrop King as well. Mm -hmm. These are these are all these are all companies, Caroline, uh, that manufacture and produce seed uh, for farmers to plant, so they can have different types of grains or corns uh, to be able to provide for either animals or for people. Uh, so we have um, uh, this, um, this this uh, this idea that she's going to go and glean ears of corn. After him, in whose sight I shall find grace, and Naomi said, "Go." Now, in verse three, where did um, where did Naomi uh, where did Naomi go? Probably not Naomi. Where did Ruth go? In the field. In the field, and in whose field? The after the reapers and their. Hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boza, Bo to Boaz. Boaz. Right. <laughs> to Boaz, that's right. Now, um, now, let me ask you we're kind of a, re a, re a review question. Of whose kindred was Boaz? You know, we verse, according to verse 3, of whose kindred was Boaz? Uh, Limelech. Elimelech, that's right. He was of the kindred of Elimelech. Now, Elimelech kindred, of course, means family. He was of the family, he was of the kindred of Elimelech. And uh, so she was able to find, would providentially find uh, the field that was Boaz's and um, was able to start gleaning in this, in this particular field. So we've looked at some verses here uh, today uh, on... Some verses, a few verses in chapter two. We finished chapter one. Um, so, how, what, what is it? What occurred? Give me a quick review, kind of each of these to share some thoughts. What's occurred in chapter one in the life of these women over the course of ten years of time? It's very interesting how the Bible has a large period of time. Ten years, perhaps not that large, but. We don't know what else would happen in their life. But the ten years, are, we have 22 verses. We have ten years and 22 mm -hmm. verses, you know. And so, uh, That's in, in very the book specific of what it's yes, talking about. Right? And, I mean, the book of Genesis has you know a lot more years in, in chapter four. Uh, that, that, that's that's squeezed in the chapter four. We have perhaps even 100 years, if not a little more than that. I, I, don't, I don't know the exact number. There's a lot, a lot of time. In Genesis chapter four, a lot of it, a lot of things that are mentioned that God wants us to know. And so, what what are review our thoughts? We want to review some things that you remember from chapter one, Caroline, and these these couple of verses here in chapter two. Just the fact that Ruth lost her, one of them lost her husband and the sons, and yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. That was it. <laughs> And that was that was in in Naomi was bitter. Naomi was bitter about that. Yes, she was, she was bitter about that. And what's some other things that um? Well, Ruth decided that she would go with her mother-in-law rather than return to her mo the yes. house of her mm -hmm. mother. And um, when she came uh, into the land of uh, Bethlehem, um, she went to glean to provide something for them to eat. In the field, uh -huh. and she went. It sounds as though it was an accident that she went on. I mean, it wasn't an accident in the mind of God, of course, but um, that she happened in to uh, Boaz's field. Yes, that, that's that's right. That's what the, the word "hap" "hap" means. You know, happened um, from her from her from the human standpoint. You know, she wasn't intending. No. On it. It wasn't intentional, but, but, but God, God's uh, hand of providence was upon that uh, to bring her uh, to this kinsman. Not only her, not only her kinsman, but the kinsman, but, but you know, as far as bringing her uh, to the one who eventually would become the kinsman redeemer, her husband. 
It's, 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 uh, it's uh, the providence of God. So, we've got through, uh, I think we've probably got through verse 3 of chapter 2. Uh, we're moving, well, we have a good, good, good pace through the book of Ruth. And um, next time, uh, we're going to pick up with uh, verse 4 of uh, chapter 2. But any thoughts or comments or questions additional to what we already said no. so far? No, I'm fine. No? <laughs> and anything you might have or no? Or yes? I don't think so. Okay. All right, good. Well, let's, let's close with prayer. Father, we want to thank you that thou dost care for us. And even with the things of having our Ruth go to this field, uh, your hand of direction was upon this. Allow us to realize uh, your hand of direction in our lives. And you bring us to different places and bring people across our paths. Allow us to realize what you are doing, that you are in control of everything that happens in our lives and around our lives. Allow us to be obedient to thy scripture, thy word, thy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen.